So it's got to go through a ring. That's an inguinal ring, right? There's a little frame in there. And it goes down and in to the leg. When it goes into the leg, right, it becomes a femoral artery. Okay? And what happens is the femoral artery is going to go down and in, and then you have the femoral vein which is going the opposite direction. But right next to it. Now, this is an example of an anatomical band, a vein artery in the nerve, and a common connective tissue sheet. So what happens is, is that's a clinical landmark for finding a lot of stuff. Okay, you use that to find the pulses and to find the femoral vein so you can you know, insert catheters and all sorts of stuff. So the point is that that is going to be an important structure. So what happens is it goes through and then it drops down. Now remember, see the femoral artery is initially anterior, okay? So if you look at the model of the leg, what happens is, again, you can look at it on this model too, what happens is you see you have the internal iliac, external iliac. Now, the external iliac goes to the inguinal ring. This is the inguinal ligament right here. And it's going to come down. Flip this over in a minute. It'll come down, right? And what it does is it's initially anterior, superficial, actually. It's right here. Right? And then as it goes posterior, as it goes inferior, it goes posterior. So the femoral artery, the femoral artery goes down and it's given off branches to the muscles of the thighs and to the femur bone. And it goes, and what happens is it ends up posterior when it reaches the popliteal fossa. You know what the popliteal fossa is? The posterior opening behind the back knee. Okay? Right? Where the all the tendons come down to attach the tibia, creates those tracks and the big fossa in the back. That's called the popliteal fossa. So when it emerges from this little foramen in here, through the muscle, through the hamstring group, right, through that real, two real hamstring foramen it's made, and it comes out, and then it's in the popliteal fossa, so then it changes name temporarily to popliteal artery. Okay? I'll write it down for you. And, but the interesting thing is, it runs anterior to posterior in the leg. That's what it is. And it's giving off deep branches, all sorts of branches. Don't worry about them right now. It's more important to remember the path. Okay? You start out anteriorly, and it drops down, and as it goes inferior, it goes posterior. Okay? And it becomes the popliteal artery after it goes through this little foramen. It's called the subsertorial foramen. So underneath the sartorius muscle in the hamstring group. And makes a little frame, a little triangular frame. And it goes through. It comes out and becomes the popliteal artery. Popliteal artery goes down through the knee, behind the knee, and then what's going to happen is a piece of it stays posterior, and then a piece of it goes lateral. Okay? Now the piece that stays posterior becomes the tibial artery. You can see it here on this model. Okay? The part that stays, that goes anterior, is called the fibula, a peroneal artery. Okay? And that's branches too. There's branches of that, but most of it, most yeah, of it. The tib posterior piece becomes the what? Becomes the tibial artery, the tibial. which is going to give branches to the gastrocnemius, soleus, posterior tibia, all that whole area there. And then you have an anterior lateral portion, which becomes the fibula, right? Because fibula is lateral, right? Okay. Yes. So that's the so the fibular artery is here, along the fibula. Okay. It's actually in the interosseous membrane, but it's called the fibula. And there's a couple of branches. Sometimes it's called peroneal artery, and then it's called fibula. Now, point is, is that these two vessels, they meet at the ankle, okay? And in an astomosis, very similar to the um, hand, okay? So what happens is you got this kind of thing. So if this is a lateral 